Hi guys and welcome to JTech WP. In this video I'm going to show you how to move a lot of sites from one host to another. I've got 122 sites that I'm moving from UK Fast to Crystal. I'm going to break the move down into two phases. Phase 1 is everything you need to do before the move day and phase 2 is everything you need to do on the move day. I gave my clients one week's notice that we were moving. I had to create two email templates. I made a spreadsheet so I could keep track of everything that was happening. To reduce the amount of stress on yourself and your clients, I highly recommend doing your transfers on a Friday morning because that gives you all weekend to get any problems sorted out when your clients are less likely to be in work. And the main reason that I did this is because when you're transferring domains over, they can take anywhere between 24 and 72 hours for the DNS to propagate globally. So this means you've got your tech support there on the Friday to move the site. Saturday and Sunday, you kind of days where, okay, yeah, if I've got a problem, I can change the setting, fix it. That makes it easier for you. Some really important factors to consider are the IP address and any ports that you need to have open. Your new host may use different ports to your old host. What I would do is contact the new hosting provider, in my case this is Crystal, and ask them what IP address do I need to whitelist, are there any ports that I need to whitelist, and once I have that information I'll go to my old provider, which in this case is UK Fast, and tell them can you make sure that the firewall does not block this IP address and this port? Then your transfer should go through pretty smoothly. It also is a benefit if you've got SSH and full WHM access. When you move to a new hosting provider, you'll need to renew your SSL certificates. And in some cases, like with mine, the HT access file also needed modifying. So we're gonna cover how to do both of those. The introduction message that I sent to the support team, this is the new host just saying that how many sites I've got and that I've got full SSH and I've got WHM, that I'm happy to make the DNS change myself and I've got a few questions about the email setting. I wanted to make sure that my existing setup was gonna stay exactly the same because the last thing I wanna be doing is changing every customer's email settings on every device that they own because that would just be a right pain and pretty stressful for me and for them. And here you can see I've asked for the IP address, so finding out what the new IP address for the server is, my old server has SSH access and I've also got WHM, which does make the move a lot easier. I got a reply from their migration team saying there's no need to change any email settings as they'll all stay as they are, which is great news. I had two servers, they're gonna put them on the same cluster again, so it's gonna have an IP address, not two IP addresses. Then they specified the date, so they're telling me that they were open nine to five Monday to Friday, and they're asking if I have root access to WHM, which I do. I'd sent them the SSH credentials and WHM for the old server. They checked them out to make sure they were working, which was great. To avoid any issues on the old host end, it is well worth making sure that you whitelist your new IP address from the new host. That was a transfer date arranged. I've now been issued the name servers, so there's my new name servers. So they're telling me if I've got a domain that's using 123reg or another domain provider, for example, you need to ask them to update the MX and A records. I found that just asking them a few questions, they'd always give me like a, a really useful answer, you know, didn't make me feel stupid or anything like that, which is always nice. Next, I created two email templates. The first one over here, website changeover. This is the one I sent out to my clients that I manage their domains for them and their hosting, basically saying to them, we're moving to a new server on this date and this time. We make an exact copy. If you've got any questions, please let me know. And then some nice things to know about the server so they know what they're getting. Then we've got the second email, which says to them uh, that they need to log into their domain provider and change their name servers to the new ones here. And also the MX records. And to be helpful to your clients, just make sure you put a little line in there saying, if they're not happy doing it themselves, just please send me the login details and I'll change it for you. This is an example of the Excel spreadsheet I created for my clients. What I've done is on the left hand side on here, I've listed all the domains that I've got on my server. Then I've put the next one is DNS updated. I've got whether it's with another provider, for example, this one's with 123reg. I don't manage it. The client manages it themselves. So what I would do is I'd mark this as I don't have access to this. So I'd mark this one as red. And the same with the GoDaddy one. I don't have access to this. The client has access to that. So you can see now that these domains here, I've got access to these as I manage them. And the ones I don't have, I've marked in red. Next step is, for whoever owns this domain, I'd send them an email. Once I'd sent the email, I'll mark it as green. I'll put the date that I sent it. 
I sent the email on the 3rd of January, 2021. So I know that this person's been notified, but they haven't read it yet. Once they have read it, I'll tick on the responded. So I know the client knows about the change, press green, or whichever date they responded. So 041, so that's 20. And I continue doing this. So for the next couple of domains, for domain two, where the provider's with an external supplier, I'd send them email number two, which is the external supplier one. Again, I copy the same process and wait for them to reply. They might reply a day or two later. And once I've received the reply, mark it as green. So you send out all your emails. If you have a client that doesn't reply, I would put a note in here like phone them. And then if they haven't replied by email, you could give them a ring. And once they've gone, oh yeah, okay, I've read the email, I can now check that to green. One field that's worth adding is the emails. Add an email field. And the reason I put this in is you may have a client that hosts their site with you, but they have emails with Google Mail or Office 365. And this is where I put that. So if this client has an Office 365 email, I just put in Office 365 and I'm going to mark it as red because I haven't configured the settings for it. The rest I'm just going to leave clear so I don't need to look at those. For phase two, the hosting provider is now transferring the sites across 20 at a time. Once they come in, they send me an email to say 20 of the sites have been transferred across. I can now start adjusting the DNS, resetting the SSL, adjusting the HD access file, and then testing the sites. I received an email from the support team, basically saying that the first 20 had completed and will show up in the WHM in the next 15 to 20 minutes. Once I receive this, this is when I go into the domain panel. So you go into your name servers, add in the new one. In my case, it's this one and name server two is this one and then we press update once i've updated the dns i go back to my spreadsheet so i've just updated the one for jtechwp.com click on here and we're going to change this to green so i know that's been done if you cite showing an error 403 the tech support said that we need to find this line here and change it to this by commenting it out I now need to go to the C panel. And what I'm going to do here is update the HT access file by going to File Manager. And then we want to make sure in settings that you've got show hidden files that needs to be ticked. Press save. We're going to go into public HTML and we're looking for the .hd access file. I'm going to right click this, press edit. It'll give you a little warning, press edit. So I'm in the HD access file, scroll down, we find this bit here, this is the one we need to change. So I just need the hashtag, paste that in there, paste that in there, paste that in there, and it should all go green. And then we just press save changes. Go back to our spreadsheet, click on the HD access, mark that as green. Our cPanel, we've now got to reset the SSL certificate. So in cPanel, I go SSL, go to Let's Encrypt. You can either press reinstall or issue. I'm going to press reinstall and then it gives me option press reinstall and that will refresh the SSL certificate. Now I can go into here, mark this as green. Okay, for this domain that uses an external email system, I'm going to go through the same process again. I'll update the DNS, do the HT access, but this time to make sure I've got the DNS correct for the emails, we need to go to our cPanel and then we're looking for domains zone editor click on this and then we go to manage you can add your records by clicking the drop down and then basically filling them in so you choose which one it is from the supplier and then you keep adding records and you can do that in here so I can now go domain 2 is done HD access SSL they're all done and my emails for that person are done and I just work my way through that list and keep going and eventually your sheet should look something like this. So they should all be green. Anything you haven't done, you can always go back and check it. I know we've done this, so the client's given me access. I can tick that as green and it's now done. Once you've done all that, the next stage is go into your WHM, type list, and then click on each site one after another and just check that they load and have a quick look through and make sure there's no bugs. I click on my domain name, it opens in a new tab 
I'm just having a quick scan through all the different pages, make sure that they're all loading. And they seem to be working pretty well. And if anybody wants to do a course on WordPress, I've created one that you can buy on Udemy. If you're using Cloudflare, I can go to my domain name. And then we want to go to DNS. And all we're going to need to do on here is change the A records. We can leave the MX as it is. So just to edit this, this has actually got the new ones in already. I go to edit, add my new IP address in there and press save. And the same for these two here, edit those, add my new IP and press save. And you don't need to change anything on the domain server end. Well guys, I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next one.